if you put in Lyle Alzado, what's the first thing that come up? His life is a cautionary tale on the dangers of steroids. The end of his life is the thing that they see, the admission to being on roids. You know, the big, massive guy that I was, that was all phony. Lyle Alzado, oh yeah, he was, you know, steroids. That's what he's labeled as. How long were you on steroids? Most of my pro career. Instead of being remembered for all his great accomplishment. The Los Angeles Raiders, the kings of the hill in Super Bowl XVIII. He got banished because he came out and told the truth. He wouldn't have been out doing every charity in existence if that's all it was about, was steroids. Because he was the first one, he is not considered to be one of the greats. He could have lied. He could have not said anything. Nobody would have known anymore. He decided to say, I took steroids. I made a bad choice. If I can help somebody not use, use my story as an example. You're going to be a football player when you do that? Today is the best day of your life. Believe, believe it. He might be the finest quarterback produced in the last 10 years. He needs to be like that. That's all I need. Fortunately for me, I didn't lose my life. I didn't lose my job. Football convinced me that life is a team game. Rest of your life, nobody can ever tell you that you couldn't do it. People can portray me any way they want because I don't give a damn. I am what I am. And until those people touch me close enough, they'll never know what I am. If they want to see me in this interview or, 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 or in a newspaper article and say, what's the matter with this guy? Let them say it. But don't you analyze me and don't you tell me what I am until you get close enough to understand what I am. Then you can make a, an analysis of me. But don't you dare do it until that. It was easy to get the wrong impression of Lyle Alzado. For 15 seasons, with the Denver Broncos, the Cleveland Browns, and the Los Angeles Raiders, he was a human volcano, always primed to erupt. Lyle Alzado just throws Ilk at his side. Long before Walter White and Tony Soprano, Alzado reveled in playing the anti-hero and captured the American imagination. He's a face right out of cave drawings. You imagine John the Baptist looking like this, Joshua, the Old Testament prophets. He plays football with the berserk fury of a trapped water buffalo. He sees himself surrounded by evil. He howls at injustice. He's not a defensive end, he's an archangel. Put your helmet back on. Don't you know that Alzado had the left hook? They, they call him Darth, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Darth Raider. <laughs> People had this image of Lyle Alzado, mad, crazy. Talk about street fighters, that's how he would describe himself. When he walked in between those white lines, oh, you were prey. He's a falcon. You're a duck. Alzado comes in, head slap. That'll get you a penalty right there if the official sees it. He was all about the rage. Go, go, go! Watch him out, He's giving him everything he has. He's clubbing, face mask, grab anything. That's why I came up with the name Three Mile Isle after Three Mile Island, the nuclear power plant that exploded. There goes Alcedo. Yep, look out. I'm a violent person. I play a violent game. And anybody who tells me that they go out there to have fun playing football, they're a liar. Because this game isn't fun. This game is a war. It's not like we had Dr. Phil moments. But I certainly understood that he was a tortured soul. Happiness was the holy grail. I think he was chasing it, and unfortunately never found it. I was physically fearless. I think emotionally, uh, he wasn't. We really didn't have a childhood. I used to call our house the house of horrors. We lived through a lot of abuse. 
a lot of violence. How did you grow up? Lousy, really lousy. From a father who was disloyal, who was an alcoholic, who's been in and out of jail, prison most of his life. He uh, molested my sisters. He used to beat the boys really badly. Lyle just tried the best he could to get me out of there so that I wasn't hurt. He always protected me, always. One time, my dad got out of the car and he was after my mom. And Lyle ran downstairs and he broke my father's jaw. Boom. My father had him arrested for assault. You think about what that does to you as a child. No matter what in your life, you still love your parents. No matter what they do, you love your parents. So think about being a young person and having to do that to your father. It hurt him. Lyle wanted my father to love him. That's what he wanted more than anything. That boy was broken and beaten, but not defeated. He would live the American dream and die an American tragedy. He rose from the depths of a shattered home to the heights of fame and fortune. He became one of football's great pass rushers. He shocked the world when he fought the greatest. He is the first man to sack Joe Namath and smack Muhammad Ali. Fought for those who could not fight for themselves. What would you like to be when you get old enough to be it? Football king. And even became a Hollywood star. We will be performing at the Super Bowl. Would you welcome Lyle Alzada? In the end, there was the big lie. But the boy and his search for happiness were all too true. Being the best is it's hard, to, uh, it's hard to achieve. And that's the most important thing in my life right now, is to become the best. I had this fury in me. I belong someplace back, BC time, somewhere that I could have taken out the hostility that I have in me without having the fear of going away forever. Coming up. I could sick him on people like a Doberman. Get him. My father never taught Lyle any kind of love. When you don't have that, and you're trying to learn that yourself, sometimes you never learn it. Lyle was about trying to love to the best of his ability. He kept searching, and he wanted to fulfill that void, and he never could. Success was never enough to fill that hole in his heart. Although Lyle Alzado pursued it relentlessly, from the day he joined the Denver Broncos as a fourth-round draft pick in 1971. I'm Lyle Alzado of the Denver Broncos, and I'm mean, and I'm tough, and I'm the best defense then pro football's ever seen. Me, Lyle Alzado. He was very romantic. When Lyle went to training camp, he wrote me every single day. A lot of them are love letters, poetry. Some of these flowers have to be smoothed out, Mom. Don't slaughter the rose, just <laughs> cut it. <laughs> That's probably the reason I put them in a box and saved them all those years, because it was so, I don't think I could really believe it myself. I don't have any super plans for us. I just know that I want to make you very happy. I only have myself. Myself seems so little. You are my world, and your world is mine. I want to be happy, and I want to make you happy. Happiness to me is the most important part of my life. I feel and know that's what I'm going to have. This was a Lyle Alzado his teammates rarely saw. He's one of the few men in the NFL who has achieved the destruction of a training machine. Broke it. 
You know, the way you see somebody who's really angry and that anger goes to the point where it's out of control. He's not able to control that anger. You don't be beating on the guy's head. Yeah, you can't hurt him. You're not gonna hurt the guy. I have been. He was relentless. He was all out on every play. He never quit. He was always after the quarterback. It was almost like he was a, a survival thing for him. I grew up in Brooklyn, being in jail and, and, and getting to street fights. And I don't particularly think there's a person on this on this earth that can kick my ass. And I'm out there to prove just that. He's holding me. I told him to keep his hands off me. He didn't keep his hands off, so I punched him. Punched him? Yeah. He would build up into that that rage, and then you would see it come out. And it came out in the form of hits for losses. And it came out in the form of tackles. And it came out in the form of sacks. I know I spent time trying to imagine how much of Lyle was Lyle and how much of Lyle was steroids. He was a health nut before health nuts were popular. He didn't drink, he didn't smoke, he didn't do any other recreational drugs. I don't think he ever, ever told me he was using steroids. I think he thought they were a muscle builder. He looked at it that way, not like it was a mind-altering substance. Whatever he loved, whatever he thought was good for him, he would do to excess. And that, that was just his personality. I can't imagine what the proper dose was, but whatever that was, I'm sure he wasn't even close to it. He was probably taking five, ten times as much. The NFL did not begin testing players for steroids until 1987, two years after Alzado retired. It wasn't against the rules. A lot of guys did it. I never sensed that there was a moral stigma about it, that we were walking around going, oh, well, that guy's cheating. We did know that it made you better. The last thing Three Mile Lyle needed was an edge. As the Broncos developed into one of the most feared defenses in football, Alzado won the love of all Colorado. They were called the Orange Crush defense. Well, Lyle was the Orange Crush. All the interviews were Lyle, 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 because he was the Orange Crush. There was a contest to recognize someone, and they showed them the President of the United States, and they showed them Muhammad Ali. Lyle won hands down as being the most recognized person in Denver. <laughs> it was definitely exhausting to be his wife. He did crave the attention. Even Robin Williams and Mork and Mindy got caught in Alzado mania. In 1977, the man Sports Illustrated dubbed the Frank Gifford of the Rockies, won Defensive Player of the Year honors, and led the Broncos to the promised land. It's not a team championship, it's an entire state, uh, state, sure. state of Colorado championship. Being able to go to the Super Bowl, that was his ultimate dream. To win the Super Bowl, that just was over the top. We just saw one of the darndest football plays. Lyle Alzado at about 2.52 caught Newhouse from behind, and he was 15 yards quick when he started to run. If you watched the way Lyle played, you saw how important it was to get that ring. Great effort by Lyle Alzado of the Denver defense. No one will ever know how well Lyle played that day. Fires it out and intercepted. Our offense turned the ball over eight times. Are you believing this? That is the eighth turnover by the Denver Broncos. And we gave up 27 points off of eight turnovers. The team that broke that record was the Buffalo Bills against the Cowboys years later. They turned it over nine times and gave up 50 plus. He was so upset when the Broncos lost that Super Bowl. He cried. 
coming up. It was insane. Here is the heavyweight champion of the world, and Lyle's in there trying to fight. Nobody says it's a serious fight. Those are serious punches being thrown. Take all the things of Lyle Alzado and throw them out the window because here's the one thing that he always was. No matter what, it was the most consistent thing in his life. Lyle had a good heart. He wanted to do good. With kids and people who couldn't help themselves, he'd be their champion. Over the course of his career, Alzado raised millions of dollars for children's causes. His heart really was in charitable work. He would leave the practice field and, and stop at Children's Hospital. If you watched him, he was like hands-on with these kids. Who's your best friend? Got a lot of them. You got a lot of best friends? I don't have but a couple. It's like who? Well, I have a friend back in New York, Mark Lyons. You see Lyle's gentle, giving, generous side, and you have to fall in love with the guy. <coughs> Are these famous people? No, but they're good people. You know, you don't have to be famous to be good. You're a good person. Sometimes kids look at athletes and think we're what they're supposed to be. Something they, they can relate to, something that's a dream. And if you don't have dreams, you have nothing. Some people would look at it like there must be a TV crew around. That's not why he was doing it. That meant something to him. He always took time for kids, always. He'd fight for the kid who couldn't fight. Three Mile Lyle's biggest fight was in 1979, when he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. I destroyed Joe Frazier. I destroyed George Fullman. I destroyed Spinks, Sonny Liston, Archie Moore, a football player. <laughs> Lyle was a former Golden Gloves boxer. Thought, all we have to do, get my high stadium, bring in Muhammad Ali, put the tickets on sale, box for eight rounds, put all the money in the bank. Lyle, you are about to fight Muhammad Ali. Are you Rocky? Or are you just crazy? You're probably the greatest heavyweight that ever lived, and if you think I'm going to go in the ring and get embarrassed, I'm not going to have that happen. And I'm not bragging or saying that I'm going to beat him, but I'm going to hold my own. How do the Broncos feel about one of their most valuable properties in the ring with a heavyweight champion? Now, we're not trying to uh, stop him fighting. All we want to do is make sure we're covered by an insurance policy. Financially, he had to back the fight because he couldn't find other people to do it. So he put our house up as collateral. Yes, he did. He mortgaged his house as a backing for the fight. Your house? Come on, man. You, you mean to tell me you do that to get in the ring with Ali? Of course he was crazy. She'll He's punch. not the great white hope. He's the great white dope. <laughs> They're about to go out and meet the press. But Ali turned to him before they opened the door, and he said, you want to make some money on this? I'll show you how you do it. Opened the door, and Ali went. You think this big, fat, ugly football player is going to kick my ass? This man is going to be well known after this. This is going to be bigger than all his games put together. Japan told him to send a crew in. You're going to have a worldwide whooping. Part of the excitement was that we all knew the one thing that he won't be is scared. What the hell are you coming to me? He won't be frightened to be in the ring with Muhammad Ali. All of the rest of us would have. Here we go with round one. The ringside at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Lyle Alzado fighting in part to fulfill a lifelong dream and in part for charity. It was an exhibition. We're not going to hurt each other. We're going to make some money, put on a really good show. All of us who knew Lyle, there was a clear understanding that if you get into a ring and you start fighting Lyle, that eventually Lyle's going to fight. As the fight went on. This crowd react, but every 
punch that Alvedo throws. And Lyle was doing well because Ali was letting him do well. Lyle started to fight. He is now starting to taunt Ali, and the crowd loves it. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. It was insane. But here is the heavyweight champion of the world, and Lyle's in there trying to fight. Nobody says it's a serious fight. It's an exhibition, but those are serious punches being thrown. Second round, Lyle did fairly well. He was throwing some really hard punches at Ali. He has picked the tempo up considerably here in the early seconds of round two. The cameras were on and the lights were bright. He looked for an opportunity uh, to pop Ali. He was going to knock him out. We can now say that he is the first man to sack Joe Namath and smack Muhammad Ali. <laughs> and then Muhammad Ali zapped him to kind of say, hey, we're just in an exhibition match. How does this football player in his wildest dreams think he can stand in the same ring as I? Ali really peppered him, like around his head. Look at this, Nick. He stung him good. I mean, that head was going back like that. We were close enough where you could see it and feel it. Whoa, good overhand right by Ali. Ali was out to show, this is my job. <laughs> this is what I do. There are quarterbacks all over the country who are rooting for Muhammad Ali today. After the fight, he said, I hit him really hard, and then, boom, I really got hit hard back. <laughs> like Rocky Balboa, Alzado had gone the distance with the champ, but he was still fighting the demons of his past. I would have fought before I played football. It's a dream that I've had half my life, and the reason why I quit boxing was because well, I don't know how to say this, but my, my dad was a fighter and turned out to be not such a nice man. Coming up, along comes the loud Alzado. Alzado going out of his head. It's not so much that the rule exists. It's more how the rule got put into place. <laughs> You weren't serious about being a heavyweight fighter, right? Of all times. Hey, you want to have a good time? You got to have a good watch. Same here, Rocky. For Lyle Alzado, there was no Rocky part two, no rematch where he beats the champ. And one month later, the Broncos traded him to Cleveland. Get the hell out of here with you yeah, guys. Denver was a place where I started my career. Denver was a place that I fell in love with. Denver was a place that took away everything that I dreamt of, too. I gave them loyalty. They made me bitter by taking that from me. The Cleveland Browns are a team that can win a championship. We are going to win a championship no matter what anybody says or what anybody thinks. He helped turn another losing franchise into a contender. But Alzado still couldn't go the distance in Cleveland. He was traded once again, and the search for happiness continued. I have a desire inside of me to fulfill some dreams. There's nothing worse in this world than, than having people give up on you and, and not believe in you. Alzado's last shot at a Super Bowl came with a team that would accept him for who and what he was. So you feel you found a home now? I don't know if I'll ever find a home, but this is the closest thing to it. Loved him as a Bronco. Disliked the fact that he went to the Cleveland Browns. He is a perfect Raider. Lyle Alzado was born to be a Raider. Last Sunday, the Los Angeles Coliseum looked more like the Roman Coliseum. You guys came out early. You had like two penalties and a couple of fights and everything, all in about the first three minutes. Is that part of? Well, that's so just, just get a, into it. Huh? No, it's not any different than what we usually do. Yeah. <laughs> he had great threats. Uh, he was a great threatener. You know, I'll kill you out in the parking lot in front of your family. You know that kind of thing. I'll kill you and everything you love. I'll beat you so bad your family won't speak to you. Talking about how he was gonna tear people's necks off and spit down their throats. Along comes the Lyle Alzado rule. It's not so much that the rule exists, 
It's more fun in how the rule got put into place. <laughs> 82 is the year of the helmet. Anybody who hasn't seen that thing has missed a piece of the NFL lore. That was when Lyle got mad and ripped his helmet off and started beating the Chris Ward with it. And I don't know why he got so mad. And then they initiated that Alzado rule. Rule 12, Section 2, Article 15. Use of helmet as a weapon. <laughs> Player may not use a helmet that is no longer worn by anyone as a weapon to strike, swing at, or throw at an opponent. <laughs> when Lyle ripped his helmet off, initially, Chris Ward was like, what are you doing? But when Lyle picked it up like a weapon, that was a game changer, man. <laughs> I couldn't believe they didn't throw, you know, throw Alzado out. When Alzado threw the helmet, God bless, I was back to almost, you know, missed me by about a foot. What are you throwing a flag for? You, there's no rule. I mean, it's not like the fathers of the game sat down and said, hey, if somebody ever takes a helmet off, they're not allowed to beat the other guy up with it. Bad enough to take it off of Dan Zan, but then to throw it at him after he's uncovered, that seems a bit malicious. They got him for unsportsmanlike conduct or something. Like that's unsportsmanlike. <laughs> what about Chris Ward? What happened? With him? I don't like Chris Ward. He's a big mouth. He's a hot dog. He runs his mouth. And if I had a chance to have him swallow his helmet, I'd have done it. Okay. The people who make the decision on how the history of the league is chronicled you certainly don't hear a lot about Lyle. I know what kind of football player he was. I mean, I was on the field. I lined up next to him, so I know what he was. When you say Lyle Alzado to people who understood Lyle's career, they go, oh, yeah, he was, you know, steroids. Uh, and that's a shame because there was a great player in there. In 1983, when Return of the Jedi ruled the box office, Darth Raider led his second team to the promised land. Kyle Alzado has his second sack of the afternoon. But entering Super Bowl 18, the biggest news story wasn't Alzado's return to prominence. It was Three Mile Lyle's threat to decapitate Joe Theismann. Joe Theismann and I were in the superstars together. Uh, he's, he's a great athlete, and if I get a chance in the game to tear his head off, I'll do that. Lyle Alzado says he wants to tear my head off. Is this really news? Of course he does. That's what Lyle does. It took on a whole life of its own. Decapitate him. I'm all for it. Wrapped up by Alzado. Alzado says, I love this stuff. Uh, Super Bowl. Washington was the defending Super Bowl champion, and at that time, the highest scoring offense in NFL history. The Raiders held them to just nine points. It really didn't hit me how significant his journey was until I saw him standing on the sidelines crying. The look on his face when he's standing there like that, and we won the Super Bowl, there's nothing like it. For one night in Tampa, Lyle Alzado was truly happy. Clock ticked down and he pulls me out of the stands. And he brings me on the field. And we're walking off the field, arm in arm. Hey, look, 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 look. 
For him to take his boyhood friend to every single landmark thing in his life, it was, it was amazing. I've experienced a great deal in my career, but none is this as a world champion. You're a world champion, we're a world champion, and I'm a world champion for the first time. Coming up, you bought this tape for a reason. That's to get in shape. Hollywood was a great town for him because he was a ham. If you follow the sports, uh, particularly football, in the last two weeks, two of the uh, most valuable players in the league have, uh, have had serious injuries. Uh, Joe Theismann of the Washington Redskins and Lyle Alzado of the Los Angeles Raiders. You're out for the season. You're 36 years old. Yeah. You're, an, you're an old man. <laughs> <laughs> for I can football, still, you're you an know, old man. Yeah, I could still kick your <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. As his body began to break down, Lyle Alzado went to Hollywood with hopes of achieving happiness. He liked the L.A. scene. He wanted to still be a star NFL player, but he knew that was waning. Paramount Pictures asked me to do a, a show and uh, a number of other things that have yeah. taken place. So, you know, I'm going to... you got a lot of things going to happen, Jesse. You're doing commercials. No more pretty shampoo from me. Tegrin's tough. Four times tough. It's got a special ingredient. When I played football, I crunched quarterbacks. But now I crunch these. JB's pigskins. The new pork rind still going. Unlike the Energizer Bunny, Alzado's football career was powering down. I don't ever want to be second best, and I am now. So, it's time. Hollywood was a great town for him because he was a ham and he loved the camera. He said, Jan, I'm going to do an exercise video. And I'm like, really? Okay, well, that's great. When you approach weights, you don't approach it with a sensitivity. You approach it with a warlike attitude, and we're going to do war with the weights. You ready? Begin. One, two, three, four. Anytime you put the camera on and said action, he'd give you something. Whether how good it was, that I don't know. He would send me clips of his latest TV series or movies and wanted to get my honest opinion. <laughs> and I did. I didn't I would tell him the truth. That's probably why we we didn't stay married. <laughs> Lasting love eluded Alzado, but he always kept trying. Well, Lyle was married four times. I was always the best man. He was larger than life. I, I just, I fell in love with him, watching him. We met at Alzado's, it was a bar. Buy these girls around the drinks for me, will you? He had all his memorabilia on the wall. You have everything you need? Everything. The real Lyle was a very kind, big-hearted, charming guy. Why did you guys get divorced? Um, well, no, but the truth is he had lots of affairs, but, you know, he always said that, um, I, I only love you. The affairs don't mean anything. But I think that continued through the rest of his life. His marriages kept falling apart through no fault of his wives. It was because he was emotionally unstable in, in that arena. You know, Lyle said something that stuck with me. He said, what do you say about a guy who wants to do good but can't? Guilt was very much a part of the fabric of my brother. Lyle said to my husband, how do you stay with one person and love them? And he just didn't know how to do that. And he searched for that his entire life and never was able to find it. Movie stardom and marriages were not enough to satisfy Lyle Alzado. After four years away, he went back to the one thing that had always brought him closest to happiness. What do I miss most about pro football? Probably the idea of Nah, I'm not going to lie to you. I just like the violence. I'm 40 years old, and I would come back in a second. Raider Minicamp has a special added attraction this year with the return of 41-year-old Lyle Alzado. It's the best shape I've ever been in my life. I have more muscle mass. I'm bigger. 
I just remember thinking that it was absurd. Can he come back, in your opinion? It's hard to say right now. I, I, I think it would be foolish for either you or myself to uh, say no. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Lyle's coming. He's coming again. <laughs> He is pumped up like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he's Mr. Universe. A lot of people, they'll see that you're 41 years old, you're coming back, you look the way you do, they're gonna say, the guy's on steroids. Oh, that's a, that's a joke. You know, that is such a joke. Just because an athlete is built well and he works hard and he trains hard, it doesn't necessarily mean he has to be on steroids. It's kind of an unnatural look. No matter how many weights you lift, you're not gonna look like that. Lyle, when he was making his comeback, had gotten a, some human growth hormone from a cadaver. I think it came out of Europe, so who knows what was in that. Lyle Alzado's story had always seemed too good to be true, and his comeback was, ending after only one preseason game. Mr. Davis, who I love very much, said to me that we're going to go with the younger players. I had a dream, and I, and I went for it, and and it, it didn't come true. Coming up. He made a deal with the devil. He got fame and fortune. Lyle Alzado. Gosh, a 500-pound bench <laughs> press. And it was time for the devil to collect. He had a premonition about dying young. When Elvis died at age 42, Lyle actually said to me, I feel like that's going to happen to me. And then he died at, just after turning 43. In the spring of 1991, as he made a vow of, till death do us part for the fourth time, it became obvious that something was very wrong with Lyle Alzado. When he got married the last time, that's when the first signs of it happened. He wasn't dancing. We used to dance all night long, everywhere we went. At his wedding, he was not dancing. And I said, what are you doing? He said he had an ear infection. He didn't feel good. If you look back at the tape, he was walking a little bit, favoring one foot or the other. The third day we were on our honeymoon, that's when I knew something was wrong. Somebody asked him for his autograph, and he went to write, and he was just doing circles. I said, Lyle, stop it, that's not funny. And he said, no, really, I can't. I can't write my name. About two weeks later, they diagnosed him with cancer. The broken boy had lived the American dream, and in his pursuit of happiness, done the unimaginable. I have everything I've ever wanted and more. You know, I've had a lot of good luck in my life, and I always remember where I came from. It's just part of me that um, wants to be part of what I used to be. But Lyle Alzado was never satisfied and never understood the price of his ambition until it was too late. When I talked to Lyle about steroids, he was, would get very angry at me. I know how he talked to Lyle, that he should stop. He wasn't gonna listen. People would say to him, Lyle, they said that stuff kills laboratory animals. And he said, well, it hadn't been proven in humans yet. I said, Lyle, you gotta stop the steroids, man. You know, not on his ass like that. His response was, Pete, I'm gonna do what I need to do to play the game the way I wanna play it. It's been real tough down in the trenches. Look at the line play. Alzado's about as strong as there is. Because of the way he felt inside about himself, because he felt so inferior, he felt like he needed him. And all Lyle was trying to do was just to be a better athlete. He got fame and fortune. He made a deal with the devil, and it was time for the devil to collect. His sickness hit Alzado where it hurt the most. He had always aspired to be 
the father he'd never had. His father wasn't there, so he wanted to be there for me. He wanted to make sure that I didn't have all the problems that he had. You know what, Justin? What? You make a pretty good tough guy. I know, Dad. <laughs> when my mother told me that he was sick, maybe it was me being just so young, that I didn't believe that a sickness could hurt him. And even seeing it, I didn't believe it because he was always so strong and so healthy and, and such, you know, an alpha, an alpha male. When he looked at me and said, I'm going to beat this thing, there was no part of me that believed the doctor. I only believed him because basically anything he told me he was going to do, he went through with it. The first 10 pounds he lost was almost like 100 pounds to him. He just was not used to, in any way, shape, or form, being what he felt was weak. Lyle Alzado had always relished playing the villain. But in the final act of his football life, Darth Raider chose to do something heroic. This is Lyle Alzado today, over 60 pounds lighter and struggling just to walk. Looking at myself now, I'm half the man I was. You know, the big, massive guy that I was, it was all, I hate to admit this, but it was all phony. How long were you on steroids? Most of my pro career. You know, I played 16 years. And it, it got me where I wanted, but also got me very sick. It was a very rare form of brain cancer. I think he felt that was retribution. He had a lot of guilt attached to doing the steroids and lying about it. I, I just hope that, that this interview will convince junior high school, high school, and, and, and college students that they can do it without this stuff. He didn't have to say a word. He didn't have to tarnish his legacy. He wanted to be the cautionary tale of, this is what can happen to you if you do this, so I'm going to let you know the truth. I'm gonna do what people so seldom do. I'm gonna let you know the truth. I admire him more for that than anything else that he ever did. I lied. I lied to you. I lied to family. I lied to a lot of people for a lot of years. I was like a maniac. I outran, outhit, out anything to everybody. All along, I was taking steroids and I saw that they made me play better and better. This is the hardest thing I've ever done, to admit that I've done something wrong. So many people tried to talk me out of what I was doing, and I wouldn't listen. If I had known that I would be sick now, I would have tried to make it in football on my own, naturally. I'm sorry I lied. I'm sorry success meant so much to me. Going from being built like I was to being built like this is very hard. But I don't feel inferior any longer. My strength isn't my strength anymore. My strength is my heart. If you're on steroids or human growth hormone, stop. I should have. Lyle Alzado went from a troubled childhood in New York to tiny Yankin College in South Dakota to start him in the National Football League. And today, he died of cancer at 43. It was really heartbreaking for everybody that loved him. All the people that truly loved him, that knew who and what he was. And we still all loved him because he did have such a great heart. And you know what the saddest part is? For everything that he gave to everybody else, he never could truly make himself happy.